So, <clears throat> oh, there you go. The voice went. That's a good start. I mean, you know, normally a good YouTuber would erase this, but I'm just going to plow through. Um, so I uh, didn't get a video up last week, end-ish, whenever I usually put them up, um, because, you know, life, it, get, it gets in the way. Uh, but I did hit some garage sales, and um, I had, you know, not a lot of stuff, so I didn't bother putting a video up. Also, what happened, I was extremely disappointed because I found a really, really good uh, Canadian psychedelic music uh, uh, record and bought it uh, at a garage sale, not for very much money. And then when I got it home, I checked the record uh, and it wasn't the correct record. However, this week I went back and um, I they were having another garage sale and they had all the records there and I went through every single one and I found it. So persistence, you know, does pay off. Um, I also, at that same garage sale, found an exceptionally valuable and pretty scarce uh, sort of soul funk, northern soulish uh, 45, 7-inch. Uh, and um, I'll show you guys that because between the two, it was like, I mean, they come in at like three, four hundred, and that's American for, for my American friends. That's not even Canadian. I mean, Canadian's like a like million dollars or something like that. I was never good at math. But the other thing that happened um, this week for me, which was really great, was I went to a garage sale. And technically, this isn't a garage sale kind of fine, but it kind of is, because the guy was having a big garage sale, and I got a bunch of little things off him. Um, and then I uh, asked, hey, do you have any records? And he's like, yeah, I do. He's like, but they're buried away. And I said, okay, well, um, you know, listen, can I come back? And he's like, well, where do you live? I'll bring him over to where you live. And I told him I had the store. And he said, great. And he brought them in. He showed up with a shopping cart full of records, which was kind of awesome. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you those because I did end up buying them off him. And he also, as kind of an added bonus, was like, hey, you into like comic books? And uh, he brought along this big stack of comics. And a lot of them are sort of like late 60s, early 70s. And they're all sort of TV, gold key TV covers and like Marvel superhero with some Batman thrown in, you know, from DC just for good measure. So again, that it was something we'll go through real here quick. I don't know how long it's going to take. If I have to split them up into two videos, I'll do that. But we'll, we'll see. I'll let you know. Let's go look at the stuff. Okay, so this is basically everything that I picked up uh, over the last um, two weeks. I mean, there's lots of other things, but this is more like the records and I threw the comic books in just you know, because I will say it is exceptionally hot. And even as I filmed that other uh, intro, um, I was sweating profusely. It is uh, really hot in here. And uh, I have had the air conditioning off for about half an hour now. And I didn't realize how much I'm perspiring. Um, so at least you don't get to see that all the time. Instead, you know, you might see a drip of sweat come down. How awesome is that? That should be like a Netflix show. Fat middle-aged record guy sweats for you here we go um so i will just go straight into it the first uh thing i went to uh last week i asked if they had records and the lady brought out the stack and there wasn't a lot in there but she had all this stack of 45s and i was looking through and i'm actually familiar with this lab label because i've sold a couple off the stone lady label everybody should sort of look out for this um because it is a good funk label and pretty much everything on it not absolutely everything but most of the releases are pretty scarce and highly sought after and fetch big money now this one um is the david sheffield it's got your wrong wrong on that side and then on this one what's done in the dark is on the other side now there is another version of this that has uh your i don't think your wrong wrong is on it um or maybe that b side isn't on there i'm not 100 percent sure i can't remember exactly look it up on discogs um but this is the one that if you look it up on discogs i'll give you a second two, three, yeah, yeah, if you found it, the median on it's like $250, and it's sold for over, I believe, and I could be wrong, $450 before, now this one isn't in the best shape, it actually is like beautiful, except for one section that has this big mark on it, um, and I spun it, and you can definitely hear it, um, so that was a bit of a disappointment, but again, 
I don't think I paid a buck for this. So something for you guys to keep an eye out. Stone Lady is the label. Um, it's the, 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 what's done in the dark is an amazing track. Just if anybody's like, it's really cool. Uh, check it out. So that was that. And then this, this was the one where I was like, oh my God, I like have kind of been looking for this record for a while. I've never even heard it, but I've had friends who've, uh, told me about it. And uh, it's sort of French Canadian uh, psychedelic music. Um, it was released uh, in Quebec and, you know, the rest of the world and throughout Canada. But I was super happy. I grabbed it. And then while I was there, I, I pulled it out and realized, oh my God, it's the wrong record inside. And I went through the record she had sitting there. Um, but I was under a time crunch, so I didn't get to go through all of them and I didn't find it, but I took the cover anyways. It was like, you know what? Uh, it's a cool cover. I'll hang it on my wall, whatever. I, this week decided, um, at this week's garage sales, uh, to go back. I was done all the other ones and I had a little bit of time. So I went back and they were still having the garage sale and, uh, I went through the stack of records and I found it. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. Like that's kind of like a minor vinyl, um, miracle, um, honestly. So it's, I can't wait to spin this. I am like super excited because I've heard it's really, really good. Um, but again, it's another like, you know, hundred and something dollar psych record and that's the thing for people who are just getting into records like well i've had the store for 20 years but my whole life i've collected it's always the, the weird looking ones like i used to strictly buy records just based on the cover sometimes if i hadn't heard of them it's like look if these people look like they did drugs they probably made some interesting music um and i don't think you can get more than that champignon which for my people who are not familiar with uh, le francophone um, is mushrooms because there's little mushrooms on it and it's premier capsule. So first capsule. Um, yeah, yeah. Can't wait to check that out. So that was really it from the other weekend in terms of like records and stuff. Um, but this week I didn't even have to really go. I went, hit a couple of garage sales. I got some, you know, few things just more for myself than anything else. But I asked a guy, Hey, do you have any, um, old records? He said he did but he'd have to dig them out and he wouldn't be able to do it. And then he asked me, Hey, can I, um, I can bring them over to your place. And I told him I had a store. And so whoop, shopping cart uh, shows up about halfway through today and, uh, had all this. Now, um, he also had, he's like, Hey, do you, he's like, I, you said you, it was a collectible store. And he's like, do you do comic books? And I'm like, sure. I don't specialize in comics, but like, you know, I'll mess around with anything. And I do collect comics largely, um, sort of silver age marvel stuff um and then just interesting pop culture stuff um so i'll go into the comics in a second but here uh we'll go through the records because there was some really interesting stuff there was just regular stuff but there was pretty pretty good stuff now overall um he wanted 200 bucks for the records and the 45s and uh the comics all together and i'm like yeah kind of a no-brainer so pretty happy that I, you know, I bought them off him. He was pretty happy too, um, because he didn't have to wheel the shopping cart back. So just some basic stuff in there, like Simple Minds. I'll just flip through them real quick. Uh, there was some jazz, a little bit of Thomas Dolby, your Beatles, um, some Lou Reed, which is great to see. And there was quite a bit of sort of like new wavy punk stuff on here. So you've got this one, which is like no wave compilation. Um, you know, Joe Jackson, Squeeze and the Dickies back when the police is on there, back when people thought the police was a new wave band. Um, UFO, uh, Iggy Pop's Party, Fairy, Talking Heads. Um, and then there was some more, like, you know, contemporary stuff, like Ry Cooter. This was kind of interesting. Eddie Clearwater, it's, um, he's like a blues kind of legend. Um, and it's signed by him and the whole band, which is kind of cool. Uh, Beautiful Day, Kale, Chipmunk Punk, that's fun. Uh, Steve Perry. Now, this is interesting because this is the uh, the Demix, which were a um, based out of Toronto, um, like 70, I think 90, this is from 78, maybe. I might be a little bit wrong on that, um, but it's around there. They were like a punk band. They had like their big hit was uh, New York City. And uh, it's a great track, if you can ever track it down. But this is uh, their first EP, and it's on Ready. And I'll see if I can do this with one hand, because there are two versions of this. There you go. 
and it's based on the label. I don't know if you can see that there, but that is the script label, and it's uh, primarily all yellow. Yeah, 1979. That wasn't too far wrong. Um, there is another version of this uh, where it is still Ready Records, but there is a lot more black. It almost kind of looks like a bit of an umbrella across there, and the Ready Record isn't primarily yellow. So this is a first Canadian copy, and it's pretty scarce. And again, it's like a $30, $40 record. Um, sort of uh, when you've got that first, even the this, this second pressing thing. Willie and David Allen Co., that's a great record. Bonnie, J.J. Kale, Cooter. Another copy of Space Opera, because honest to God, I've gotten like four of these in the last like three weeks. So um, Humble Pie, it's the Canadian pressing on it. Uh, Jack Bruce, uh, a stone sticky finger with a zipper. I haven't checked to see which zipper it is. Oh, it's a star. Yeah, okay, so that's good. So it could be an early on. Fortunately, there's like a sticker on here, but I might be able to get that off. It's in quite good shape, though. Go-Go's, Jay Giles, Edgar Winters, uh, Brownie McGee, Morai Cooter, Chai Lights. Uh, let me get that out. Morai Cooter, uh, Batter Wives. It's the red vinyl one. You have to trust me on that. Um, this is Cheech and Chong's Big Bamboo. And I, if I recall, yeah, there it is. It has the rolling paper in there, so that's kind of fun. Um, not a super valuable record. None of these are super valuable, with one or two exceptions. Um, Beatles, Springsteen, more Beatles, more Beatles, more Beatles, more Beatles. Stones, Princess Purple Rain. Odd that it was in amongst all the 60s stuff was like Serena Ryder, and it's an autographed copy of her stuff. She's a Canadian artist. Uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Blah, blah, blah. That's a British copy of um, Hard Day's Night, which is kind of interesting, you know, for a Canadian. It's interesting if you're in Britain. Probably not that interesting. Um, let me just think up. But here's where some we get into some interesting stuff. I keep saying interesting. Um, it's the Kinks. It's a bootleg. Um, they did two parts of this. It's the Winterland concert for 77. I'm a big Kinks fan, so this will probably stay with me. Um, Tough Darts. Uh, this, again, another one that was sort of later. It's like, uh, Graham Parsons, um, Lost Recordings put out in Sundays, I think around 2000. So that's kind of good. It's got a bit of damage at the corner, but I'm not too worried about it. This is Polish. I have no idea what it is. UB40, Labor Love. Now this. This is something that I did actually get quite um, excited about. It's uh, kind of like a psych prog band uh, called Sweet Smoke. And it's um, from darkness into the light. And this is a first German pressing on Harvest. And uh, it is in immaculate condition. It does not look like it's ever been played. The cover is in fantastic condition. That's a $50, $60 record. Um, easy, possibly even more. Uh, because of the condition so I was pretty happy about that and it might probably like most really good stuff that I don't have end up in my collection for a little while anyways uh Stan Getz and Yao Gilberto um this is the Dickies this is a UK it's a first uh, UK pressing because it is on Let's see if I can do this with one hand again I can look at that it's on yellow vinyl which is kind of fun uh Mose Allison that's my mystery favorite. There's a few, like, clunkers in here, too, you know, but whatever. Um, that's Monty Python record, Thompson Twins. You know, this stuff is going to end up being in, like, some of it's going to end up being in the dollar bin. But I think that's kind of it. Oh, that Della Reese, Black is Beautiful. That's a good record. Some Carly Simon, J.J. Kale. Um, there was, these are um, in... A little bit rougher condition like they'll play through uh, but they've got a lot of like sh mostly just sleeve wear and stuff like that. there's no massive scratches or anything but aretha arrives greatest hits i wish this was in better condition because it's a great record that marvin gay tammy terrell joe jackson earth wind and fire steve ray vaughn ike and tina um gladys knight uh pips al green oh such a good record Kansas, Isaac Hayes, The Fix, and two Niels Lofgren. So that is all of the uh, records, uh, the 33 RPMs, the, the long players, the LPs, as the kids call them. Actually, the kids just call them vinyls. I don't even know. Um, so yeah, pretty happy because when I can get something as rare as these two from garage sales, I 
is a pretty banner week, although it was a week ago. Um, and even the 45s, these are, there's no like super rare titles in here, but there are ones that are usually trash. Now this, it's a little bit dirty, but there are no scratches on this thing. It's the question mark and the Mysterians. And um, I've got the 96 tiers, but I do not have a copy of this. That's probably staying with me. Rolling Stones, um, it's the Canadian picture cover for Mother's Little Helper and Lady Jane. It's in great shape on the inside. A couple of stacks, singles in here, if I recall correctly. Um, stuff on Bell. Like I said, these the thing about them is that they're all... The Bob Seger system is actually a little harder to find. Um, they are... Yeah, there's the 96 tiers. I already got a copy of that, but that one looks probably a little better than what I got. But, you know, again, the Zombies... Stevie Wonder, Beatles, nothing super rare, but, you know, jukebox stuffers that are in good shape. Guys love these things, um, you know, so long as they're priced appropriately. And these are in good shape, um, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's Mandela, another Canadian band, kind of psychic, psychedelic, not psychic. Maybe they're psychic, I don't know. Um, that's Marvelettes on Tamla. But the thing I love about this one is it's in a um house of music from london ontario i love finding old bags from old record stores i'm gonna keep that might even frame it um another stacks single there some kinks barry mcguire four seasons jerry yeah so you can kind of get the idea of what's in there um it wasn't anything there's nothing that makes me oh my lord i've done you know amazing on this um, but, you know, I wasn't going to turn them away because they're in pretty nice shape. There's another one of those in the bag. Am I the only person out there who, like, loves finding old, like, record bags from, like, record stores and then keeping them? You know, I, it's okay. I understand if I am. I'm okay with it being a hoarder. I have no problems with it. So, uh, yeah, we'll do the comics real quick. We'll just go through them to give you an idea because, uh, you know, maybe you're not into comics, but they're pretty cool. Like, look at the graphic. Like, look at that artwork on there. That's such an amazing cover. Like, you know, so it's uh, Batman number uh, 205. These are great. Like, they really are fantastic. But then here's some of the uh, Marvel ones. And there's no, like, huge heavy hitters. These are all sort of, like five and six dollar um but they're in really nice shape uh, i don't think there's any big key ones in here but these are in pretty nice shape overall captain america daredevil fantastic four man i love the fantastic four when i was a kid um adventure comics more fantastic four more fantastic four oh look iron man he's quitting um daredevil Wish there were more amazing Spider-Man in there, um, but there aren't. World's Finest, Adventure Comics, another Batman. That one's in a little rough shape. This is kind of cool. This is like a 60s, uh, it's Green Arrow, Green Lantern, but it is an anti-drug um, thing. You can see the, you know, thing more deadly than the atom bomb. And winner of the Academy Award for Best Comic. And I can't forget, man, I wish, here, you know what, I'm just going to look up and see what year it is. 71. So, yeah, it's all basically about heroin addiction, and it, that's pretty heavy, you know, but there's an important message from the uh, mayor of New York City in there. That's kind of cool. Marvel Tales, more Daredevil, Fantastic Four. Look at that. Like, look at the Black Bolt. Like, that's a great looking superhero action comics. Now these are fun too, because these are a lot of the TV shows on Dell and gold key. So there's uh, get smart. I have no idea who that is. Uh, Hogan's heroes. Hogan. That was terrible. I really shouldn't do that man from uncle. Um, I didn't watch a lot of Westerns when I was a kid. My favorite Martian. Um, boy's life one of these these are classics oh look at that that's an awesome cover um yeah so you get the idea um daniel boone time and space i need to learn stuff um space adventures more man from uncle i am not doing that camera work real well atomic mouse twilight zone that's awesome dr solar man of adam i know gold key was never like something that Got a lot of credit back in the day, but man, look at those covers. Like, that is, like, wall-worthy. That's amazing. Um, Three Stooges, more Dr. Solar. They're awesome. 
Um, this misadventure of Merlin Jones, the Atomic Age. There it is. Uh, more Get Smart. He's working with the dog. You know you're doing well when that's happening. More Hogan's Heroes. Um, Billy the Kid. More Westerns. Oh, look, I did have Superman. Lois Lane. What's down here on the bottom? Cheyenne Kid. Oh, this is the best one. It's Kato. Bruce Lee right there. That's the man. Green Hornet. And then uh, D-Day. Um, so, yeah, again, I think uh, there's also a stack that's equally tall as this of, like, Archies and stuff, but I didn't want to bore you with that. Um, I'm not a big, you know, hey, the Archie stuff is cool, uh, but it's not anything that I was ever super interested in. So, um, yeah, you know, he, just one more time, and I've said this so many times, I wish I had a count, but basically, when you're at a garage sale, and if it looks like, it's going to sound terrible, but if it looks like the, like the people, the dudes like used to party back in the day, you know, like the sixties and seventies, they just look like cool people and they're having a garage sale and they've got some old stuff. Ask them if they have any records or anything at all, because nine times out of 10, if they do, you're going to get some interesting records out of it. And so I was pretty happy with that. And the fact that, you know, it was delivered to me, <laughs> come on. I didn't even spend gas money on it. So that is it. That is uh, it for um, the last two weeks. Um, hopefully I get some more stuff and I can, uh, you know, keep putting up weekly videos. Um, but it depends on what I get. Sometimes I don't get enough to really do one. So there you go. I uh, hope you all were able to find some stuff on your uh, explorations uh, on the weekends, hitting garage sales and yard sales and little tiny stores. And yeah, bye.